So if you use WooCommerce for your online store, you will know that customizing the look is not necessarily the easiest thing in the world to do. No matter what theme you choose, you still have limited controls over what can be done and what can be edited. But in this video, I want to demonstrate how we can start to use CSS Hero to start to control and adjust the way things look. It's a very simple way of working and a very visual way of working. So if you're the kind of person that has some CSS knowledge, you're going to love the fact that you can get in and start to hand code and adjust and tweak things. But if you're a beginner or you just like to work visually, then this is going to work equally as well. So what we're going to do is we're going to jump into WordPress, open up WooCommerce and take a look at how we can start to customize things using CSS Hero. Hi, my name is Paul C and welcome to WP Tuts, where I show you how to create beautiful WordPress websites. If this is your first time on the channel, please consider subscribing and hitting the bell icon below to be notified every time we add new content. Okay, so this video is sponsored by CSS Hero and it's going to primarily focus on showing you how to use their plugin to start to edit and customize WooCommerce. Now, like I say at the top of this video, WooCommerce doesn't give you a ton of options to customize and even choosing a good theme will still have its limitations. So I'm going to show you some of the basic things you can do with CSS Hero. Whether you're a visual learner or you're the kind of person who likes to code, they've got your basis covered with this plugin. So let's just jump over into WooCommerce, fire up CSS Hero and see how we can start working with it to create more customized looking layouts inside WooCommerce. So if you're new to working with CSS Hero, I'd recommend checking out my overview video on CSS Hero before you jump into this one. It's going to give you a good understanding of how it works, how you work with the plugin, the customizer sort of layout and everything that goes with it. If you're already used to working with CSS Hero, we'll just jump in at this point. So what we've got is we've got the customize with CSS Hero option at the top. Once we click that, we open up a new window that's very much like the customizer inside WordPress itself. But this is all to do with CSS Hero and adjusting and editing the CSS in a visual fashion. So clicking on an item will bring up the simple options in the left hand window and we can work in either the sort of point and click way that you're used to or we can go in and start working with the code editor itself. So let's just switch over to the navigate option and let's go through and find one of our shop pages. So if I scroll down, you can see I've already got some options for WooCommerce products. We're gonna click on there and we're gonna jump into the actual product detail page. And we'll take a look at how we can sort of go in and make some changes and edits to this and start going through and customizing our WooCommerce setup. So let's start off with something really simple. Let's say we're gonna take the actual monetary value for this particular product. We wanna start making changes to that. Before we can do anything, we need to switch back over to the select option, so a select mode. Now we can click on anything and you can see when we mouse over, we see the hierarchy of the CSS that's associated with it. So we can now click on any of these and what will happen is on the left hand side we've got that properties inspector that we can go through and change the various different parameters and the code editor underneath it which tells us exactly what parameter or CSS definition we're going to be editing. So now that we've got that selector selected, we can come in and just do something simple like change the typography. So we don't want green, for example, we can simply click and choose from any of the flat material or the colors that are used throughout this page. So let's just say we want to set that to be blue. We can click and you can see it immediately picks up the blue color. Now the thing to be aware of is that you're dealing with CSS and this is going to be a global change. So anywhere that references that particular selector that we've got below, will have that change reflected in it. So it's a quick way and a very visual way of working. You also notice that we don't have this little sort of minus sign in between the little sort of separator. Well, we can click on that and we can come back in and we can say go to typography again. You can see that's still green. So we can now choose the blue we want and that's immediately reflected there. And you can see we've now got the slightly different definition being edited. So it's incredibly easy to make these changes. Let's just say, for example, we want to change the price over on the option side of things. Again, we just simply come over, click on it, choose the typography, change it to whatever we want, and you can see that now is reflected throughout all those three different options because they all reference that same CSS definition. In this example, the amount style. So very easy. So let's do something really simple, like let's select the values again for the amount of money this particular product costs. Come into our typography. We don't want colors this time, so we're gonna close that down. We could change the font if we wanted to, but let's just say we wanna make this slightly lighter and slightly smaller. Well, very, very easy to do. We can just adjust the font size on there, get it to whatever we want. You can see the little separator isn't being changed at the same ratio, so we can click on that and do the same thing again in there. Come into typography, scroll down. We could change the weight of that again to 200. And if we want to, we can bring the font size down as well, just to make sure that comes in line. And we can do the same thing for the heading. We can say, well, we want the typography on that to be bigger. So we don't want it to be 600. We're going to go for 400 on this one. We're going to say we want the font to be larger, to make it stand out a little more. So let's go for 36 points. 
And we can also do things like we can set it to be uppercase or we can do lowercase, whatever we want to do. Let's actually come back in and make it thinner again. You'll also notice that we've got these little three dots above certain definitions. If we take our mouse over there, you can see we can reset that property. We can make it important or we can specify it's for large screens only. So we can use that to trigger it to only be displayed when you're dealing with a certain resolution or above. Now, CSS Hero is great for dealing with various different breakpoints. And I'm not going to show you in this video, but I will show you in a future video how you can implement those breakpoints to give you even more control over how your web page is displayed across all different devices and different screen resolutions. It's very, very powerful and very, very easy to work with. So let's just say you're finding that you're making a change where nothing is being reflected. Then what you can do is you can come down and you can say, make it important, and that'll force that particular style definition to be made important, which should over override any other definition reference that is throughout any style sheet that's being used inside WooCommerce, whether that's the WooCommerce style sheet or your theme style sheet. So remember that if a change is not being made, you can then tag it as being important and that should override any problems. So that's pretty cool, but it's also pretty easy to do. How about if we want to do something like hide something or we want to change the way a button looks? Well, we can do all that as well. So let's just say, for example, we want to change this add to basket button. We can simply click on it. We can come in and let's just say we want to go to the border radius. And let's just close this down so it's out of the way so we can see a little bit more. You can see at the top we've got border radius that will apply to every border radius. In other words, all four corners. Or we can go through and do each individual corner separately. So let's just say we wanted to make this border at the top left to be, say, 6 pixels. Actually, let's go for 10. And we want to say the bottom right to be 10 as well. So we just click up on there. And again, you'll see when we mouse over, we've got these definition options. So we can go through and say we want to make this important and so on. But now you can see we've created a bit more of a bespoke button that isn't exactly the same as a normal standard button. And also, let's just say we've got these options underneath, which is the sort of metadata. Now, some themes will allow you to enable or disable this. And WooCommerce out of the box, if you want to do this, you've got to normally sort of go in and start messing about with creating functions in your function PHP file. That's great if you're com comfortable doing that. But if you're not, one of the easiest ways of doing it is to hide it through using CSS definitions. So what we can do is we can click on that. So we've now selected that area. What we can do is we can come to the extra option. And you can see we've got the option for visibility, visible or hidden. We can even adjust the opacity and so on. And so provided we've got the right selector selected, if we click on hidden, that should hide that from our screen. So we click on hidden and you can see that's now taken away. So very easy to do. Okay, it's going to be loaded in, so it's not ideal. But when you're dealing with something as small an amount of text as that, it's not going to have much of an impact, if any impact, upon the load time of your site. But it's a great way that if you want to take things out of the look of your site, you can just use the CSS definition, select it inside CSS Hero, and then make it hidden. Very, very simple. Now, before we move on to the product listing section, let's just take one final example. Let's take this sale sort of little badge in the corner. All we need to do, click on that, and we can do something simple, like change the background color, and we'll make it stand out a bit more. So we'll set that to be red, and very easy. So we've now changed the style on there. If we want to change the spacing, the typography, all those things can be done incredibly easily. But hopefully what you can see with this is it gives you an incredibly visual way of working. Now we've taken a look at how we can edit various different components of the single product page. Now I've jumped over to the archive page and we're going to take a look at how we can start to customize this a little bit. So we've focused on doing some simple things like changing the text and button styles and so on. But how about if we want to change some of the containers and give it a little bit more of style? Well, we can do that incredibly easy through CSS Hero as well. So let's just say we want to come down and start making some styling changes to the actual individual product listings. We can click on any individual product. And we can do some nice things on you. So we could come down, we can do things like extra, we can put box shadows in this, we can click on make shadow, and we can go through and we can make a sort of shadow that we want. So we can say, let's just set that to be black, for example. And you can see that immediately picks up the styling across all those different elements that are using that. We can adjust the position of that particular shadow very easily. We can adjust the opacity. So we're very quickly creating our own custom look to the way that our product li is listed in our archive page by using some advanced CSS definitions without the need to hand code any of this information. So once we're happy with that, we can simply click on choose or we can keep on adjusting until we get exactly what we want. So as you can see, it's incredibly easy. We can set the shadow position to inside and outside. So once we're happy, we click on choose. That's now giving it a little bit more individuality. So we can now come in and do things like adjust the picture to make sure that everything sits the way we want it to. So let's just simply click on that. Let's add a little bit of padding at the top now. So we're going to come into the spacing option. And you can see there's all the spacing tools. We've got margins, we've got padding, and so on. And you can see it's nicely laid out to show us a visual representation of how this is all going to work. 
So let's just say we're going to put in six pixels of padding at the top. Actually, let's make that 10 so it sits and looks nice. There we go. So what we've done now is we just added that extra little bit of space around the top of the picture to make sure it sits nice and neat inside our layout. Again, you can see it's very easy to do. There's no real rocket science involved in this. So we've seen how we can easily make those changes to any of the objects, any of the CSS definitions, but we've got some other tools up our sleeve as well. Let's just say we want to set a style for a button. So we can just click to select that button. So we say add to basket. This was a view basket. So we'll click on the add to basket. Uh, we'll come over to the snippets option this time and you can see in there we've got a range of different predefined layouts So we've got things for buttons utilities shadows dividers and so on We can click on the buttons and we can just choose any of these and apply it to any button that uses that definition So what we can do is we mouse over this little eye icon You can see all the buttons now pop up and take on that styling say if we choose a different option And again for the third option. So if we want to use that we can apply it you can see we've now got the option to change the color in there. So we can simply come in and specify the color that we want to work with. So let's just say we want that to be a green button, just because that would be lovely to look at. So we choose the color on there and we can say we want to preview that. And you can see it immediately picks that up. And also it doesn't just choose that one color. Any of the complementary colors that are part of that button styling are also adjusted to the green as the base color. So you can see the little sort of darker highlight at the bottom has now been picked up and it's reflected. So again, really cool. Now that's great, but what if you don't want to use one of these predefined styles, you want to use your own? Well, we can save our own edits as snippets as well. All we need to do is select the item, the definition that we want to save as a snippet. So for example, we've got our little background with a ghost shadow and so on on there. You can see if we come up now and we click on this little three sort of hamburger menu in the corner, we've now got store this element edits as snippets. Click on there, you can then specify create your snippet and what category does it go into and do you want me to replace the current element styles with this snippet as well. So you can see we can quickly and easily create our own custom snippets, save those out. So when we're working with a project that may have lots and lots of changes but they don't necessarily have the same definition throughout the entire site, we can use those snippets to get real quick edits and updates wherever we need them. Again, one of just great time-saving ways of working with CSS Hero, especially like I say, when you're working with something like WooCommerce, which doesn't give you a ton of customized options. Okay, so that pretty much wraps up what I wanted to cover in today's CSS Hero video. Hopefully what it's showing you is that it's a very easy plugin to work with that has a huge amount of control and power to how you want to style your actual website. The beauty of it is, even though you're using the plugin to control things, all that the end user has to load in is this external CSS file that applies those customizations. So the speed impact on your website should be minimal, if anything at all. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up, smash that subscribe button, and hit the bell icon to be notified every time we add new content. As always, this is a conversation to tell me what you think of CSS Hero. Have you used it to customize your WooCommerce store? What do you think? Let me know. Let's get a conversation started in the comment section below. Well, my name's been Paul C and this has been WP Tuts and until next time, take care.